maybe the Lolita Your or team maybe the is Roger. Banning. Well, let's find out what, the, what, what it's going to be here. I'm very excited to see the exact same bands, Deja Vu, for the third time. It feels like I've just been in this place before. Yeah. Uh, let's so see, all right? Evo Singapore, I think they need to take out the Roger instantly. But we've seen that as well from Blacklist. They took yeah. out three heroes and they left open the Esmeralda. That's just exactly. so huge on Victor. But they have the first pick. They can't just pick it up right Your after it. Nope. Banned. They still okay. are sticking to that Esmeralda band. They're thinking Obvious. that the Roger is. <laughs> then Eve. Same band. Bands all across the board now. Let's oh. see if there's a change. Maybe they'll pick up the Roger for themselves, but also as a first pick, I don't think so. Yeah. Look, I don't think so, man. I, I, I just want to wake up from this bad dream, man. <laughs> it's, uh, it's not looking too good here, but let's see whether or not there's going to be the adaptation. The fact that they're taking this long, there is a lot of deliberation of how the draft is supposed to go, and luckily they do have Youngin to kind of watch out for these things. Now, no. Uh, do you think it's going to be Eve? Yep, yep. yep. Oh, surprise, surprise. Yes, it is. Choked right. on you. So, <laughs> the same the picks after Roger? three games in a row here. I'm probably pretty sure it's going to be the Beatrix Roger. I mean, but Beatrix why Roger? fix it if it... Oh, oh no, 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 it's not. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Well, you know, Evos, at least for, they, for their side, they pick up the same uh, opening. But for BTK, they're adapting. They're really changing up their openings all throughout. But one thing is common. This Beatrix is the priority for BTK. Now, what does Evo's SG want to do? Do they want to pick up the Roger themselves? Do they want to just let it go once again right now? Because BTK, they've just secured that Lolita. Why? Because Evo's SG will pick it up. Exactly. That's really smart from exactly. BTK, man. But now, that, that begs the question. Roger or no? If you're looking at Evo's, they haven't picked up the Roger, honestly, all throughout all of their games. So I will not be surprised if this is Karina Brody. <laughs> oh my god, I swear to wow, god. Wow, you're you're so smart, Wolf. Like wow. I, how'd you see that one coming? It's like wow. it's as if you were Whoa! Oh, you wanna see Yu Zong, okay. you're gonna get Yu Zong. Let's go! Let's go. All right. Well, <laughs> yeah, well, you got the support of the crowd as well. Hell they don't yeah. want to see the Uranus. <laughs> yes. Don't want to don't want to see oh, it at all. It's very boring, but it's also going to be the Roger once again coming in for BTK. Hopefully, Evo says she is ready to deal with yeah. it because so far all the games they've lost Roger has been on the draft. You have to ban the Lilia now if you're Evos. It's very crucial for BTK to pick that up. It's their answer to all the squishiers of Evos, and eventually it's the answer to the Eve. And even with the presence of the Yu Zhong, Evo, uh, BTK will definitely still pick that up. Or maybe the Cho, right? Victor yeah, was really point. comfort comfortable with this hero. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely think it's probably going to lean towards that direction. I, I, I suppose if you are in Evos' position, yep, ban out the show, make sure you get rid of these outliers, and then really start focusing on their game plan. You pick up the Yuzong, you ban away the Esmeralda and the Cho. Uh huh. And now what? What's up? What's what's available for Victor? Last time around, when we did see this, have we ever seen this? No, we haven't seen this. Victor has always been able to get one of these comfort yep. picks, either the Esmeralda, maybe yeah. now the Uranus can come through for no. BTK. Hey, don't, don't, don't incite this. Don't use your cast the curse like this. I hope Evo's SG doesn't ban Uranus. You're abusing your power. You don't know what you're <laughs> dabbling with, Mirko. Yeah. So far, we have only seen three heroes picked up by Victor. That's the Esmeralda, the Cho, and the Phobius. All of them banned out in this game. Uranus incoming. Is that the answer? No, Let's please, see. Please, please, please. Ego, chal Ego challenge it with a Benedetta. Like, he did, like oh, uh, that, that would right. be so cool. I mean, Gear did it. Like, you got to give the clap back. You got to put a, set that statement. Yeah, I agree. Or then again, the Lily and the Cho both banned out. This is what we're talking about, which means that BTK would have to show up something else. Farsa is an alternative. So it is just between Eve, Lilia, as well as Farsa. That's know. it. I don't know though. I don't know about the far star right here. Yeah. I, personally, Evo's SG, they have the U Zong already. Yeah. If they just go for another dive style of tank, it's gonna be really hard for this far star to be able to do anything. And there Ooh. you go. Something different from Evo's SG now that the Karina has been banned. Hayabusa. Uh, you guys uh, know whether Potato can play, how good he is on the Hayabusa? Well, I mean, during the time where you still part of MPL, MYSG, long times, good old days, uh, yeah, he was able to play Assassins very comfortably, especially when it comes down to the Hayabusa, where he used to be a big priority pick during Season 4 and 5. But until then, finally, this was a good time for you to be like, Ruby, and you would have gotten it. No, yep. because every time I say Ruby, they don't pick it up. When I don't say Ruby, they pick it up. It's just the caster curse coming in again here. But BTK, now they need a hero for Victor. Um, they picked up everything. 
Except for Victor Zero. Lap. Okay. I like that. I like that a lot. I I'm like that a lot. It. I'm into it. Are you right. into it, Wolf? You no, he hit to Uranus. Yeah, no. I mean, Lapu Lapu makes a lot of sense here because of the Eve. Yeah, mm -hmm. and Uranus only works with Filipino teams, so yeah. That's, that's the point. Most, most importantly. But yeah, kidding aside, the Uranus will not give them anything in here, actually. The Lapu Lapu, that will achieve something because it has control against the Eve. And the Uranus just, you know, just doesn't make sense. It's true. It's true. Plus, there is a Roger on their side. But, I mean, if they pick it up for themselves, you can't get countered anyway. But it is time here at the Mobile Legends Bang Bang M3 World Championship Game Number 4. Let's show your support. For EVOS SG, as well as BTK, your representatives from Singapore and North America, respectively. It is time to get it to the land of Dante. Duke it out. Is it going to be the game for BTK, or is it going to be match point for EVOS SG? I want to see some chat support here, man. Everyone, go ahead and spam hashtag EVOS Roar or hashtag BTK USA. Apparently, that's their cheer because they did it backstage. But again, now let's talk about the drafts inside of this game. It seems like, honestly, I don't like that Brody picked up right after the Lolita. I feel like he's going to be, a lot of his damage is going to be nullified by that shield. I think at this point, that's a comfort pick for Adam here. He's pick, pick it up way before this. And even in the uh, MPL that we saw, Evo's SG as well as the PLI, they want to pick that uh, hero for Adam here. Well, speaking of which, Little Wanderer, it's going to be a 4v3 situation, and Gear's going to commit towards, as we already see Hot Potato going in. He doesn't do necessarily good damage in the early stages of the game, and that's why they back away. Little Wanderer falling into the hands of DTK. That's why I, I kind of dislike this uh, Hayabusa picture. I like it because it's something different and it's fun, but again, you're going up against Lolita. That, that's a person with an on-demand stun, and it's going to be really yeah. hard for you to crack that back line with the Lolita just constantly being... <laughs> Being there, babysitting the marksman. Well, speaking of babysitting here, the question is whether Adamir is going to get support from the fight. JPL is hugging, uh, hugging him so far, but the rest of BTK, it looks like they understand that they are going to leave Lapu on an island for now. Yep, Lapu Lapu versus the Yuzong. It's a very stalemate kind of match we're in. Surely somebody can win with that, but if they're both playing it correctly, nobody should die in this lane. But they're... Their uh, contributions to the team fight that will come when the turtle happens. That is definitely uh, the the thing that you have to uh, look for. Maybe if the Lapu Lapu can force Gear to use the ultimate before the turtle happens, might be a good thing. But if the user plays this correctly, you will be able to use that ultimate when the Lord does does respawn. Yep. Speaking of neutral objectives here, it looks like the rest of the team of BTK are going to be rotating together to get on top of this turtle. The question is, how are they going to take this fight? It looks like they're not rushing it. They're trying to bait it out, see if EVOS SG makes the first move. And already the rotations are coming out quick from EVOS SG's side. They are looking to punish Wide chicken. I like the fact that Evo's SG have adapted very, very fast into this game. The stun comes in onto Fight Chicken and they've actually rotated to the top side playing for that Brody. Because again, in these early stages against the, against the Lolita, against that Lapu Lapu, you won't be able to get the pressure on that bottom side, but maybe they might just go for it. Yeah, speaking of going for it, BTK now on top of the turtle. JPL getting heavily punished. Real Wolf Blade Shook already comes out. Victor gets the cancel. He's already using the Rage Blades here, but Boba Zane struggling to deal with gear as he's able to knock not be punished by any form of CC. Rageblade coming out on top of Sela so far. Can Victor finish it off? No, he manages to pull away. No kills, no deaths so far on either side. It's been a slow roll of a game, but this one, both sides are not willing to risk it. All oh, Potato now getting into the middle of three. That's going to be gear going down. First blood by Razor going over to BTK. That was a really good fight for both by both of the teams, but BTK, they executed perfectly in the end, right? Yeah. Both of the teams engaged, disengaged, but BTK, they had more abilities up and ready here. Again, they have the beat tricks, whereas Adamir was in the top side. A lot of these damage coming in from Evil's SG comes from the abilities, and BTK just utilized that. Team has oh. the turtle. It's not exactly the jungler who will take it because he is far up. He's going to be just farming. So the side of BTK, we saw them punish the bad misstep coming out from Gear as he was, didn't have his ultimate anymore and was showing himself to the members of BTK. And Victor, he can just ma make this lane static so that it will not be pushed down by Evo's SG. And so far, BTK have uh, taken the gold lead, but it's just very little. I think the next fight will come, uh, the next Lord uh, Turtle fight, where they do have the items on both junglers. War Axe, I think, should be the priority now for Potato. 
Yeah, he wants to get that early damage here, but here it comes. Fried Chicken clears the wave. Gear just doing gear things. However, mid lane, we missed the action there. Shark goes and takes out Sela, unfortunately. Big, big punishment coming in from Zia. And you can start to hear, man, BTK, they're starting to get loud here on the stage. I like that, the mental game. You guys can, can't probably hear it, but it is very, very vicious. Every time they get a kill, every time they get a team fight victory, they start to yell. And this is the thing that RRQ used to do, or is still doing against every single team. But now it is going to be Potato jumping in. Mm -hmm. Using his ice frames to get on out of there with the Oki Shadow Kill. He goes back in with the Quad Shadow, gets stunned by a Shark, but so far, he's already used all of his resources for now. They have to wait for the mid game here. And, you know, giving this turn turtle buff over to fire chicken allowing him to sustain in the lane is really helping him out you can see that for btk gonna be waiting for their next team fight they have the best tools to take this turtle and for sure that they were gonna be using this luminum blast in combination with the feathered air strike so many times or maybe just even the charge coming out from shark that uh reliable stun that we can see from lolita that makes it so impactful in the meta game that we have right now Again, I'm just going to keep on saying this. Shark is just so, so insane on this hero. Again, yeah. look at this. He just buys so much time, opens up the map, and JPL's caught. Oh, oh, he already finds it into the real world manipulation. JPL should be going down oh, here. Moba Zane is insane. on the run. Can he get... Oh, no. He gets knocked up by Gear Side. Can he roll out just in time? No. Gear 5. See, it's a kill, but same goes for Victor. He's trying to zone out the entire back line. He flickers away, trying to pull through, but the shot red oh, coming out. Blocked by the Gear. They find the return hit, and you can see the passion on Gear's face. He is happy about that one. Oh, that was hype, man. That was a great fight, but look on the top mm -hmm. side. Sure, BTK lose out of the fight, but they're so good at just responding to these failed fights, to these failed engages, and getting turrets Blue and objectives on the board. Destroyed. The conversion rate is just insane in this game. Oh, fight chicken Blue really just scouting out the slack that BTK cleaning, cleaning up the mess that BTK did in the mid lane. Surely BTK gets a kill. However, they received Red so much damage from the real world destroyed. manipulation because as they picked off JPL, they took so much time. They were under the fire of the real world manipulation and then eventually gear caught up that's why when gear showed up in the mid lane mobazin was very low and it only took a matter of a combo for this yujong to take down mobazin yeah i mean both teams are taking this extremely seriously like yeah. all the members of btk whoever wore glasses have taken it off they are taking this <laughs> as seriously as possible nobody can afford to make a mistake yep. you know what's funny right here right like the things that they're able to abuse in this game it's very minimal things like I i'm just gonna say it right here for btk <laughs> Why do they look so lethal in these 5v5 fights? It's all about the targeting. You can see even when I Roger agree. goes in, usually for me, I'm a normal player. I just go for the front, you know? I just go for whoever's low. Yep. But these players, it's such a minimal thing. Again, you can just oh, yeah. target it, but they do it so, so well because the whole team does it together. Yep. Yeah. We saw that in game number two where they yes. were able to win it. I mean, oh, game number one, Moba Zane actually, even with the human form when he's ranged, his shot selection is actually yes. so good and he's landing the first skill as well. So that meant that he's very efficient with his Roger. Well, speaking of efficient here, here comes Shark oh. with a big setup on top of JPL. Dope, JPL manages to get on out of there with the conceal. All five members are out, and Evos SG can't seem to get any pushes on towards this side. Victor doing a great job at making the lane very, very, very stale. JPL is trying to get on that, but real world manipulation is already out. Cancels early as Fire Chicken has position on Sayla so far, but no kills coming through. I'm not going to lie, I'm a little disappointed by that. But it just shows how uh, competitive this game really is here. It is a match point to BTK. They don't want to lose this, but so does EVOS SG. They, they want to win this. They want to go to game five. And so far, BTK, they're giving a run for their money. Turtle is going to spawn now, but they want to go for the Brody. Oh, Brody now getting attacked. Ooh, blast. He dies instantaneously as Fire Chicken making sure that Wesker is going to wow. blow him up. That was fast. That was such a genius play coming out from Fight Chicken. Instead of going for the usual Nibiru, he went for the shotgun and capitalized on the slow the, that was a component of the Numinum Blast. Yep, and now here comes Gear initiating on towards Turtle, going turtle. over to BTK side, but that's as much as they can get here. They don't find the angles, and they're also a member down, so it just isn't worth taking the risk. They bail on out of there, and we can see that BTK, they want some more. My goodness. Boy, Jigen gets up close and personal, obviously, with a shotgun. Wesker, this probably is the best usage of the Wesker that we've seen all tournament long. I mean, we've seen Ohe with the Renner and some of them great with the Nibiru's Passion. But this time, Wesker being 
showcased by Fight Chicken. My oh my, just shows us how OP this hero is. Yeah, again, like I said, back in the Blacklist game, I feel like a lot of Beatrix is they don't utilize a lot of the guns. They only utilize the sniper and instantly just, you know, they just use the range. They don't utilize this shotgun that's so, so good, the Wesker, man. Look at how Fight Chicken has been able to do it in the Blacklist game and here on the EVOS SG game. Well, I think we also have to keep in mind that he's using this Wesker in this particular game mainly because a large majority yes. of the EVOS SG members are going to be melee. Yes. So if they come on in, get in nice and personal, nice and close, they're going to get punished. Oh, it's like oh. right now as Shark once again flickering on top and getting noob on blast. Great combinations, real world manipulation to reply, but it might not be enough here. We're going to go deep in towards enemy lines. He's looking for Fight Chicken. Can he get a big petrify here? No, he does not find it just yet, but he gets into the middle on top of Shark. Nibiru's passion is going to be landing. Has a back line now getting attacked here as Victor already in. Adamir gets punished by Victor once again. Man coming in hot with the Earth Splitter. Oh my goodness. Well played to BTK. Evo's SG, they're getting very desperate. You can see it, man. They didn't need to take that engage. They've lost gear. They've lost Adamir here in the fight. But what happened there was because JPL was picked off already. They went in without their main tank. That is the main setup for their composition to work. If you're looking at Evo Sessi, they could have just gotten away with a death onto JP on JPL, maybe just let go of that bottom lane turret because that's the that, that's the outcome anyways. And then they went in with the Yuzhong alone, going for a kill onto Shark. Even when they get the kill, which they didn't, that will not be a good trade. That's why BTK, their shot selection was great, but Evo SG, their decision making is bad now. They're crumbling into the pressure of the aggression of BTK and so so far, with a almost 5,000, now 5,000 gold lead for BTK, they're controlling the map. I'm speaking about controlling here. Potato going to be committing fully on towards Victor's side. Gear going to be helping it out. JPL just in case. They're going to be sacrificing more, but look at the, the amount of pressure wow. Victor is absorbing. He's doing a good job as he sustains through all this damage here. Committing to three all still already. Alive. He's still alive, Victor. What a phenomenal job he's done. Buying enough time for both Shark and Tia to get on in, but Gear already popping to force out the Feather Airstrike early on. Here comes Fly Chicken. He's going to be dropping Nibiru's passion on top of where's Boba Zane. There he is. He finds the wow. kill. And He's going for more. He wants JPL killing oh, three to get him out of there. You see the recalls. You see the oh, disrespect. Oh, and even Potato the wants a bit of action. Baiting him in towards that fight. He takes the quad no shadow back. And all tier twos are wide open. That was all Victor, baby. Look at the way he was able to bait four. Not even five members to that top side. Using all. Draining the resources of Evos. SG as Mobazin comes in for that cleanup. And look at this. Potato. Oh, see. Yeah, managing the land, the stun. They're looking for the end here. Gear runs right into the middle, but now BTK going to be dropping down Feather Airstrike, getting as much damage as possible. He is really stepping up. They already find the kill onto JPL. And look, the end, the game. They now have it. BTK from the USA doing it once again. GG, well played. North America stand up. No one expected BTK to get this far. And again, they keep on silence the doubters crushing it they are crushing it and that last game was really dominant coming out from btk they have stuck through with their personality their identity of being aggressive and evil says she crumbled into that pressure the slow roll from singapore did not happen tonight as btk demolished them in game four yep they really cracked them open here and huge step up for both victor and as well as here we get to see a showcase of these two players well done to BTK. Absolutely deserved victory. The silent assassin, we're talking about Sia. Mm -hmm. And in that last clash, do you know that he was able to stun the Yuzhong with the curse as well as the feathered airstrike? My god, even in the minuscule, minuscule moments where it won't matter as much, he's still performing. Sia, the silent assassin coming out from, us, from North America. Give it to them. Gotta give it to them. Let's throw it over to our analysts here to break down this game. The two L's that make up this W. It's going to be LaFell and as well as Leo. Thank you so much, Gideon.